Buying Snakes Online, the Venomous Edition, coming up. Yo, Venom Squad. Hey, today we're going to hit on a subject that I've been getting flooded with. Everybody's asking me about buying snakes online. And I've got a lot of experience. I've purchased a lot of snakes through the years, and a lot of them were online. And I've dealt with the, the worst of them, and I've dealt with the best of them. But today we're going to talk about purchasing venomous snakes online. There's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. I'm going to run you guys through the do's and don'ts and the proper procedures of purchasing an animal online but I got a little more intuition on the venomous stuff let's just say and what to look for and what to do and the whole process so hang in there and we're gonna get with it guys oh and one more thing we're gonna bust out rattlesnake X today I can't wait I'm gonna bring her in from the quarantine room and quick show her to you guys I want you guys to see the snake it is so amazing it's really a cool rattlesnake I'm like I'm like a kid in a candy store with a new rattlesnake, guys. To me, it's like, oh, I got a new toy. <laughs> so I can't wait to share it with you. I want to show it to you guys. So hang in there, guys. We got some cool stuff coming up. Hey, Venom Squad. I just want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to the generous donators. Vicki Richter, thank you so much. And Austin Smith. Thank you again for your generous donation. And Dan McCarty, of course, our weekly allowance. I want to say thank you because in these terrible times, it's amazing the support that you've given Venom Central. So thank you. I want to send a big thank you to my supporters. I mean, during these bad times, what you guys are doing for us, I just want to let you know just how damn important it is and, and what it means to us. I mean, I'm able... I'm able to, to feed my animals with my support from you guys. I mean, literally. I mean, I, I was getting stressed. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to go pull a job. I mean, get a job. Pull a job, get a job. It's all putting work in to feed my snakes. I mean, we got a bunch of snakes. And my snake business, my I mean, what I do with my offspring, you know, they get shipped off to facilities. And now I can't ship because Delta will only ship from a main hub so thank you guys so much. I mean, Diego. And Diego, bro, thank you for the feeding clips. Diego's helping me with things with this, with my uh, with my Bothrops um, thing that I'm doing with the, the behavior study. I mean, he's been sending me clips of his Jeraka suit, which is cool. Steven Stewart Music. Man, Steven, thank you so much, brother. I mean, it means the world to us. And it really is a big help. And it's keeping this channel rolling. Um... It's music to my ears that you guys are helping me like this and I, and you believe in us so much and, and we really want to thank you guys. And Len, Len Brewer. Len, I, I mean, dude, we know that you have went through some tragic times and you're still here with us and, you know, you never let us down. You're always, you're, 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 you're just such a wonderful person, Len. And me and Dina both just want to thank you so much. And you are in our thoughts and prayers every day. And... I just want to thank you guys because it really does mean a lot to us. Another thing, I, I want to give a big thank you to our armed forces, you know, on this Memorial Day. Um, you know, it's uh, to the families of, of soldiers that have, you know, given the ultimate sacrifice. You know, the, our warriors, you know what I mean? I mean? I mean, these guys are warriors and they're dying for our country, you know what I mean? And, and I'm a big military supporter. I loved our armed forces guys. I actually did. A, I I worked with some military for a while. I I was a, I was a SEER instructor for for the Marsoc Fast Marines. I was approached by a couple of their founders and asked if I would train a course for some of their special ops guys on snakes, on venomous animals, and 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 how to identify to you know wherever they're getting deployed to, and how to how, actually how to kill snakes safely, and how to how to skin them, everything that it entailed in a survival situation or a safety situation for them guys. And I ended up doing it once a month for, for a new class every month. And it was, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I was offered to get paid for that. And I, I did it for free, you know. It, it was an honor to do that for them guys, you know. And I, and I made a bunch of cool friends at it. I mean, worked with guys from all 
all, all different aspects of the, of the military. I mean, Navy SEALs, uh, Green Berets, um, Army Rangers, all the cool guys, you know. And I made some great friends out of it. But uh, just a big thank you to our soldiers. If we got any soldiers watching this, thank you so much for your sacrifice that you make for this country. And thank you guys for your loyalty to this country. And from Venom Central, I wish we could do more. But thank you guys so much. Today we're going to hit on a subject that's, it's, I've been getting flooded with this. And a lot of people are asking me, you know, who to deal with, where to get animals, how do you buy snakes online, what's the do's and the don'ts. But I'm going to start out with my protocol with, with, with getting a new animal, okay, just like with Rattlesnake X. And, you know, she's in a quarantine situation, even though she's a captive-born animal and she comes from a, a source that is really reliable. And we'll get into that when I bust her out where I got her. But... Everything is quarantined. Everything goes through a process with me before I bring it into the main room and leave it in the main room. Buying snakes online. Now, let me tell you, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. Starting with venomous animals, you got to check into your laws first and check into your damn shipping requirements. If you got a Delta hub near you that you can get an animal flown into you, you know. Um, I mean, I've had people try to send me snakes like, well, we'll just send it to you through the mail. <laughs> I mean, if somebody offers you something ridiculous like that or, 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 or we can FedEx or, you know, it's just, you know, you know right away that that's a screwball that you don't deal with. You know, you do things the right way. But there are a lot of importers. There's, there's a lot of dealers. And there's a lot of opportunity to buy snakes online. I mean, you can get online and buy almost anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... The thing is, is that, are you going to get what you're paying for? Um, is it going to be legal? Is it going to be done the right way? The animal, what's going to be the condition of the animal? These are all things that you need to know. And you want to deal with a reputable person. Me personally, I would tell people, you know, the bigger the company, the bigger, you know, the bigger the presence, the bigger the company. I mean, I'm not going to mention any names, but importers, some of them can be pretty damn shady, okay? Some of them can be straight up guys. And the bigger reptile companies that sell everything under the sun that you, you know, from, from frogs to snakes to tortoises and things, and the importers, you know, the bigger they are, you're just a damn number to them. You're just a sale, you know? And if you can't get somebody on the phone and talk to somebody about that animal's care or you know, that animal's lineage, where it's come from and what it's been feeding on, you know, that's your first red flag. If you're doing everything by text or by an email and you can't get somebody on the phone, that right there is like, zip, you don't do it. And payment, payment, you know, if you can't make a secure payment for something that covers your payment in case it's a fraudulent, you know, thing that's going on. I mean, because there's, I've been burned. I bet I got burned one time for like several several hundred dollars and he demanded postal money orders and we did that um, he cashed them never sent the animal we bitched we got a box sent went through the went through this guy went through the trouble of building a wooden box okay it was supposed to be a couple of albino eastern diamondbacks in it he went through the trouble of building a wooden box booking the shipment through Delta shipped it to me I opened it up. You know what was in there? A little baby king snake for several hundred dollars. We got on it, and luckily Dina was working at a law office, and she had some resources where she can, the phone number, track where it's from, track his name, and, you know, and of course, he wouldn't answer the phone. He would so he thought he was covered by sending me a box, and I accepted the box, and but it was a little king snake. It wasn't my albino eastern diamondbacks. And that kind of shit happens. That kind of stuff happens. People burn you. So <clears throat> there's ways to avoid that, you know. And me personally, I will only deal with somebody that I know. And I deal with breeders. I'll deal with captive breeders. And there's, there, there's a couple importers I'll deal with because I know they do the right thing with the animals. And their word is, is, is good. And I'll give you a name or two, 
I mean, I, I'll tell you, like, uh, like, like my puff adders, okay? These big monsters. I bought these puff adders from Caluso Animal Company, Paul Miller, okay? And I'm not, like, close friends with Paul or not buddies with him and trying to give him a shout-out. I'm just telling you the damn truth, okay? Paul imports animals, and he gets captive-born animals. He's an animal dealer. But when Paul tells you something, that's what it is. The guy is no bullshit. I mean, fairly priced, and they take care of the animals when they get them. I mean, if he tells you the status of, the status of an animal, that's what it is. Paul's a straight-up guy when it comes to that. And so I bought these things as babies. They were captive-born babies from a wild-caught female. The, the babies were born in captivity. And Paul told me exactly what they are. He said, they're eating willy. They're fine. They're little chubbies. And, you know, they're... they're, they're, they're and he I remember him telling me this. He said, Willie, they're going to be amazing. The adults are electric. They're bright yellow. They're beautiful. And here they are, you know, four or five years later. Look, they're, they're monsters. I mean, so that's, that's your first step. Finding a good, reputable importer or breeder to get your animals. And, and I would suggest Paul. Paul's, Paul's a straight-up guy. I mean, and I've never heard him burn anybody i've never heard him like send a crap animal i mean he's always done really good everybody that i know that's dealt with him they said man i got these from paul and they're great so that that's your first step is deal with somebody you can talk to if you get guys that are like they ain't got the time to talk to you especially after you send them money or they ain't got the time uh to literally pick up the phone that's your first red flag payment is your second red flag if they won't accept a form of payment that you're covered, if you don't get what you're what you're due, that's your it's another red flag. You know, the big monster companies that are importing and selling animals, most of the time you're gonna get that animal in and the animal's gonna be it's gonna be junk. You know, it's gonna be parasited up, it's gonna it's not gonna be what you expect. So I suggest sticking with the smaller guys that do it for themselves and they do it for the love of the animal and they're trying to share their passion and they're trying to make a few bucks at it. So that's why I suggest, you know, like Paul, he's, he, he's, he's good at what he does and he gets in some killer animals from all over the world. I mean, he gets in some cool stuff. Not only imported wild caught animals, also, you know, imported from Europe and different countries of, of, Nice captive born specimens. I mean, beautiful specimens, you know. Gets in an array of different cool things that are harder to get. Another thing that's a big one with me is, <clears throat> is telling you an animal is something and it ain't, okay? Getting an animal in and, you know, yep, you're told they send you a picture or you see a picture of a beautiful specimen and you get your specimen in and it's not that specimen. It's, it's literally a half-dead snake. Parasited up, just stressed on death's door, you know. And you got your animal and you got it in alive, but it's it's on its way out, you know. So look for, you want to see a picture of the animal you're buying. Of that animal. Not just one to represent the species. You want to see a picture of that specific animal that you're purchasing. <laughs> if you see a box... That looks like somebody slammed it together in their front yard with a hacksaw and a hammer and some nails. You realize, okay, I'm not dealing with a professional here. You know, there's ways to ship animals. And they should be styroed, double bagged in a styro, wooden crate, or a nice Tupperware bin that, you know, the big black and yellow bins that are approved by Delta now to ship. So... Is boxing is important too. If they're just that person, like, okay, no, send payment, and they just ship you the animal, that's another that there's something wrong there, okay? Because they should want to know, okay, do you have a permit? What state do you live in? Um, do you have experience? Um, they want to know the full repertoire. They should know your pedigree before they're willing to ship you a venomous animal. You know, I mean, literally, because. If all they're concerned about is getting their money, no, I want the money. Send the money, then we'll talk. Nope. You should be the priority. 
they should want to know about you. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't tell you, I get, I get so many DMs and so many people ask me for animals and, you know, and I, I generally don't sell to the private sector. I, I deal with labs and I deal with facilities and, and I have a few people that are capable that I work with that I'll, that I'll sell some offspring to. But the big thing is if they're not asking you a bunch of questions and drilling you about your where you live do you have a permit are you capable what's your background what's your pedigree all they're worried about is the money that's a big red flag a lot of these bigger companies a lot of these bigger importers they don't give a shit they'll sell anybody anything there's like no you got the money i'll send it to you oh it's doing good yeah it's great you get your animal it's not what you expect it's not what it's supposed to be and next thing you know is you're trying to get your money back you can't talk to them no more they ain't calling you back they blow you right off. And that happens a lot. Uh, a buddy of mine bought some eyelash vipers, some imported eyelash vipers, and he was supposed to get a, a green and a yellow and and or, or two yellows or something, but he never got a yellow one. He got green ones. And when he tried to rectify it, they were like, oh, it was a mistake, and you know, I'll, 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 I'll send you another one, and yeah, and that, which it never happened. My advice is dealing with smaller guys, not these big companies, dealing with breeders. And if you're going to deal with an importer, exporter, importer type thing, stick with the smaller guys that do it for the love of the animal. You know, like I mentioned, Paul Miller. He loves animals. The guy's animal crazy like I am. <laughs> I mean, so you stick with the guys that love animals because they're concerned about the animal's health and welfare. And they want you to get a good animal that that does good for you because they want that repeat business and literally um, make sure about your payment source because if you can't protect your payment source you're done you're screwed you know what I mean because if you receive something and you've already sent the money and it's you know not a live guarantee not a 30-day guarantee or whatever you can ask you're done you, you, you're just screwed you're not gonna get your money back you know so be careful guys there's a lot of hustlers out there and there's a lot of guys out there that literally it's just about the dollar you know what i mean it's just about making the money and they don't have a love for the animal so and it and it, this goes for everything not just the venomous stuff the venomous stuff is a little harder to get and there's not that much of a demand for it even ball pythons you know non-venomous colubrids you know i i've heard all the horror stories about you know i got shipped this look what this look at this terrible thing you know and there's no way to rectify it because they've already spent their money they got their animal and now that the importer or the dealer is telling them hey get lost you know what i mean or you done that to that animal so do your research check on everything possible ask their pedigree ask them about their pedigree you know and literally ask them for references especially before you send somebody thousands of dollars for some crazy morph or something you know what i mean okay to, to get on with it um i'm gonna pull out rattlesnake x <laughs> and i'm gonna tell you um like my process of bringing something in into venom central I've got a process, I and mean, I've been doing this so damn long, and I, and I stick to it. Now, even though this rattlesnake comes from a good source, this rattlesnake was produced by a by an old school snake man, he's just like me, a buddy of mine, his name's Blake, and he breeds rattlesnakes, and, and he's actually a pretty talented guy. He's he, he's he's got some bushmasters, he's he's got some crocodiles, he's got all a bunch of cool stuff, but he, he he's got big kings, and but he dabbles with his rattlesnakes, and he does some different things with with breeding them he, he he kind of like interbreeds thing he plays frankenstein okay he produced a litter of rattlesnakes several years back and these things came out so amazing and when i first seen them i was like damn what is that thing <laughs> you know what i mean he showed me three or four to, uh, uh, of the offspring i go what the hell are they i mean because i've seen i've actually produced like some some hybrids. I've done Gaboon and Rhino hybrids. I've done Eastern Diamondback Canebrake hybrids. And I looked at this thing and I couldn't tell what it was. 
And he just laughed at me. He goes, hey, that's, he goes, that's the secret. I go, well, I, I want to know what the hell it is. But, uh, and I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. I want you guys to send it in the comments what you think this snake is, okay? Because when I first looked at it, I didn't know. I could not tell. I could not tell. And I have owned thousands of rattlesnakes. I mean, it's got several different looks all in one snake, but it's really cool. And uh, and it was a gift. My buddy Blake gave it to me. He goes, man, you love that thing so much as you can have it. So I'm like, great. But my process is when I'm bringing this, uh, a new snake in, what I do is it gets quarantined. Even a snake that's captive born, and I know it's healthy, I still quarantine it for just a little bit, and I run a fecal on it, and I like to get a few meals into it, get a shed off it before I bring it into the room to leave it into the room. Now, it's safe to bring it in the room and do a video. It's not like, you know, I'm not in any danger of it transmitting something. I know this snake is perfectly healthy, but if you're getting that new snake from a breeder or from an importer, my guidelines, if you're getting a snake from someone that you don't know, is that snake goes in quarantine for at least six months, okay? You get your fecal done on it. To see if it's got any internal parasites. A lot of snakes will carry worms. You can get a lot of captive born snakes end up with worms. Okay. You can, you know, external parasites. So six month quarantine. Pit vipers, for me, they get a year quarantine. If I get an imported pit viper, I don't care if it's what country it's from. It gets quarantined for almost a year. Until I'm positive that it's solid. Because I can't risk bringing... A wild caught animal into you know a wild caught asiatic or african or south or central american animal into my collection they carry the worst of it you know what i mean but i'll tell you something a wild caught united states animal like a like an eastern diamondback or a canebrake or, or or a mojave or western diamondback i bring that right in my damn room i'm not worried about it because they're not catching paramyxia or some of the other deadly diseases to reptile collections here in the states you know what i mean it's the importing it's the whole system of importing and having all them animals piled into one facility where there's thousands of animals constantly in and out moving in and out from other breeders from other facilities that's where the disease gets picked up at that's where they get distributed and then distributed into your collection <laughs> so but i'm gonna tell you um i'm gonna bust this girl out and show her to you because i'm I've been wanting to do this since I told you about it, but I'm going to get her out and we're going to show you just how cool this snake is. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Okay, guys, this is Rattlesnake X. Now, this is a, a multiple hybrid rattlesnake. This is Captain Born by a buddy of mine, Blake, and he gave it to me as a gift. Uh, he kind of gave it to us for the channel, thought it'd make a cool video, but I've actually been wanting this snake for a couple of years since the first time I've seen it. And of course, she's buzzing. She's she's not going to shut up. Maybe we can get her to calm down. But I'm not going to tell you guys what this snake is. But looking at the pattern on this snake, when I first seen this snake and I first seen its offspring, I'm going to tell you, I've seen a lot of rattlesnakes. And, and this one stumped me. Okay. <laughs> now, literally, I'm thinking, okay, it's got, you know, maybe some molasses tendencies some some black tail rattlesnake tendencies and then i'm looking at the head the head kind of looks a little viridus and you know I'm, I'm looking at these at these long lines i'm back at the neck here you know i'm going at that, that kind of looks a little bit prairie-ish you know kind of prairie rattlesnake and then i kind of see a little bit of i kind of see maybe a little bit of eastern diamond back in there <laughs> because it's it's markings now kind of they're not diamonds they're more like saddles okay and then they kind of get elongated here and that's similar to like you know a crowless molasses of a black tail rattlesnake so it's got some western rattlesnake tendencies it's got some eastern rattlesnake tendencies it, it even kind of resembles you know a timber a little bit but this one had me stumped until you know blake revealed to me exactly what it is and uh, it, it's a gorgeous animal. I mean, I'm hoping that the colors really transfer into the camera. I mean, I've, I've got my lights on it, and I'm trying not to wash it out because she is this beautiful, 
she's this beautiful different browns and creams and grays and uh I mean, she really has like the only black on her is the tail, and she is just such a gorgeous animal, and it is such a cool rattlesnake. And this is a captive bred and born rattlesnake. So I've got her in the quarantine room for now, and uh, we just got a clean shed off her, and we've got a meal or two into her already, and um, I, I actually ran a fecal. She's She's clean as a whistle, but I'll still leave her in my quarantine room for eh, maybe three, four more weeks until she's nice and settled. We've got her set up in a nice big tub with a hide box and and uh, and she's got some big palmetto prawns in there just, just to kind of keep her calm so, so she feels nice and secure in her new home. But um, and it's important, guys, when you get new specimens, even with your specimens that you've had for years, to keep a hide box in their cages. And, um, and, and I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> Literally because if you take away a snake's hide box, you're taking away his natural instinct to hide, okay? And snakes don't leave themselves exposed very long. You know, when they're basking in the sun in the morning and different activities they do. And even when they're exposed, they're kind of camouflaged, okay? And if you keep a snake without a hide, you're going to stress it. And I've seen snakes bust their faces up, striking the glass because they because they can't retreat. They don't have a hide that makes them feel comfortable. So if you're getting new specimens in, especially wild caught specimens, or even the specimens that you've had for years, keep a hide box in with them. You'll get a healthier, happier animal. And because uh, you don't want the snakes hurting themselves. I mean, you know, I've I've got a friend that keeps snakes and and he doesn't keep hide boxes. I'm like, man. You need to keep some high boxes in there and, and his excuses. Well, the more the snake sees me, the more he gets, um, you know, uh, calmer and, 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 and accustomed to the traffic. And I go, nah, he's just getting stressed, <laughs> you know. And um, so high boxes, guys, high boxes and everything. It's the snake's natural instinct to hide. Don't take that away from him. But uh, and and if you're bringing in new animals now. Captive born animals, I still quarantine them. Um, just for the pure fact of, you know, just in case that animal has something that you can't see. You know, I mean, you may not see external parasites. Um, you get a fecal done for internal parasites, but it's just that thing where you need that time. A little bit of time, sometimes ugly things will start to show their head, okay? They'll start to reveal themselves after you've had a snake six, eight weeks. So that's why it's important to quarantine even captive born animals from another collection. You know, this snake could, could have something that I don't see, you know, which I know this snake. I've seen this snake from literally from when it was a baby and I know it's super clean. But for me, even other collections, other keepers, they could have something in the room that my room's not used to. So <clears throat> it's a good practice to quarantine everything, everything from anywhere you quarantine it and it's just a good practice to keep your animals healthy and safe um wild caught animals like animals that you would buy from one of these big companies or or or, or one of the big importer exporters you know uh, especially pit vipers i quarantine that stuff for a long time i mean asiatic pit vipers i'll quarantine them for a year you know what i mean and that's after i've run panicure after i've done everything you know it's just take that extra precautionary measures with wild caught animals. The only thing that I feel safe about bringing into my facility, let me reposition here, my legs start to fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, it, it's like a wild caught animal here from the States. I mean, if, if I happen to collect something that I want to keep or, or, or bring in to do a video, it doesn't stress me out to, 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 to actually get a wild caught rattlesnake here from the U.S. They're clean, you know. It's the whole process of bringing an animal in from another country, and that animal being mixed in with thousands of other animals that are imported from other countries. So you never know what they can transmit to your collection. So, dude, literally, take the time to do it the right way. Don't rush it. Take your time. The animals, okay. Don't rush it. You know, quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. But uh. But this little girl, I'm excited to have her. I mean, she is just a cool-looking rattlesnake. 
and uh, she's she's doing phenomenal. Of course, I mean my buddy Blake done an outstanding job breeding these things. But I want everybody leave it in the comment section. Now it's going to take time for us to get to all the comments. There's probably still some comments I haven't gotten to from the last video because we have to go through our comments. Our comments get put in a reserve and we have to read every one of them because you guys wouldn't believe some of the comments we get. Oh my God. I get the craziest stuff. I mean, I get some really nasty comments from guys that like support other channels. I get some comments that are just, I mean, we're going to screenshot some of them and put them in one of the videos. You guys would be like, oh my God, what are they dealing with over there? And I can imagine other creators deal with the same thing. So we have our comments put in a hold and we have to release them to be shown. So you knuckleheads that are leaving me all these nasty comments and the hate comments, keep leaving them. You know why? It's interaction. It's interaction and nobody's seeing it but you, you damn fool. So <laughs> anyways, if I haven't gotten to your comments, guys, I will get to them. It just takes time. I mean, and, and time is something we're short on. But anyways, I just wanted to reveal Rattlesnake X. She is the new member here at Venom Central. She is bad to the bone and she is such a cool rattlesnake. And I cannot wait to feed this thing on camera because let me tell you she is a ferocious feeder she is a monster and she's frozen thawed she's a solid snake but she has got a strike on her that's unbelievable i mean she can reach out and touch it from a long way off that's why you see i've got my my little barrier up here but she is she is just cool as ice cream <laughs> she that is such a cool rattlesnake and she's behaving like a good girl but you guys, go ahead, leave it in the comments. What do you think this is? What do you guys think that this rattlesnake is, 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 is made of? What do you think she is? What's her lineage? What species do you think she is combined? And it's a percentage thing, okay? It's a percentage thing. So, and that's what stumped me. It's, it's got a higher percentage of one species than another species. So that's why it came out so unique. But you guys leave it in the comments and let's see um, who hits it. Let's see who gets it. Because I'll tell you what, I had to be told. I, I couldn't tell. At, at first sight, I was like, I don't know what that thing is. But it's cool and I want it. So, but, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a venom sample from her. And um, we're going to just see what her venom but I'll give you guys a little hint, okay? Just uh, uh, maybe give you a little better chance to figure out what she is. One of the species that this snake is comprised of carries a type A venom, okay? Carries a type A venom, is hot. Carries that neurotoxic component in its venom. So maybe that'll help you guys with your guesses. But anyways, we're going to put this girl back. We don't want to stress her. Even though she's she's laid back, she's a good girl. She's been in captivity from the day she's been born. Um, we're going to put her back in the quarantine room. And uh, I can't wait to do a video feeding her. Because what do you guys see her eat? I mean, she's not frozen thawed, but she is a monster. She's got a feeding response like crazy. It's, it, it's fun to watch. And she's got a strike that is just, it's a blaze. It's lightning fast. But uh, she's going to be fun to feed with the Venom Cam. But, uh, all right, guys, well, I'm going to tell you what. Um, we're going to put her back, and we're going to get what you hear soon with another video. Everybody out there, have a safe, happy holiday. If you're new to the channel, hit that V logo thing and subscribe. <laughs> and give us the thumbs up, and come on back to Venom Central. This is Willie from Venom Central checking out. Later.